that goes back 38 years. When I gave birth to a son with Down syndrome, and it was different times. It was different times then. And I think people who have that experience now have probably got a more different experience to what I had. It was a shock. And I think for me, and I'm only just talking about me here, um, I think I went through a period of grieving for the child I thought I had and I didn't get. <laughs> and sounds very, sounds very cruel and cold, but I think that's what it was. I remember I went over to mum and dad's. Mum and dad were living on the coast at that time and mum and dad said, come over, come spend a couple of weeks with us. And um, they just looked after me, looked after Andrew so well. And, and then she, I came home and I had to tell people what was going on. There are a number of things in Judy Curry's carer's story that are different to many others that you might hear during Carers Week. That's because every carer's journey is different, according to the circumstances they find themselves in. But when the time came for Judy from Warwick and her husband to let people know about their son Andrew's Down syndrome diagnosis, they decided to do it a little bit differently. I'd much rather people just got to know my son as my son, not with somebody who had a disability. And to that end, we never told our eldest son that his brother had Down syndrome. <laughs> we just let the story unfold um, so that Chris got to know Andrew as he was, just his brother. Chris knew that there were differences, but wasn't particularly curious about them because it was just Andrew. In between when Andrew was born and when he went to school, how different was his first five years for you because of his disability? Again, things were a bit different, but not that different. We had a friend who was an occupational therapist, so she'd bring her little child to our place and play with him in the way occupational therapists know how to play, to strengthen neck and all that sort of thing. And I had friends who let me go off to school at that stage as a mum and just help in the school kitchen. So I'd go down and do the school kitchen stuff. They would stay home and look after Andrew with their children yep. and give him that extra experience and extra time. So I was very lucky with my friends in the community I was living in. Yeah, yeah I think it, country. <laughs> <You know? That's laughs> country <right. Yeah. laughs> takes yeah. a village and it did take a village. When it was time for Andrew to go to school, Chris looked a bit worried and he said, Mum, I'm going to need to look after Andrew at school. I said, no, no, that's not your job. I've spoken to everyone at school knows that Andrew's a little bit different, has different needs, and they're going to look after him. The principal, Mr Waters, has promised that he will look after Andrew so you don't have to look after him at all. So Andrew went to school, the only student in his Warwick school back in the 1980s with a disability. Later, he was allowed to do manual arts classes at the nearby high school. Andrew was very, very proud of his school and he went to manual arts dressed in his blazer and school tie and the principal said to me, do you think you can get him to lose the tie just for manual arts? <laughs> Could be a bit dangerous. <laughs> and Andrew said no. He said, this is part of me, this is who I am. And that was it. So they, I don't think the workplace health and safety were quite as stringent no. then as they are. While Andrew was well liked at school, he still struggled to form any close friendships. And it was this situation more than any other during her journey as a carer that upset his mother the most. I do I always wonder, I think it might be happening more now that people in the wider community can be friends with someone like Andrew, yeah. but it's still very difficult. He's a, got a lovely nature and very sweet person. He'd make anyone a lovely friend, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as rough and tumbly and the coordination wasn't as brilliant. You know, he couldn't ride a bike like everybody else. Yeah, it's those little things you probably look at a kid and they say, do it, they're on a skateboard, they're, yeah. they're yeah. playing footy, like Andrew's passion is football, but he, he can't do it. No. He can't do it. Yeah, yeah. he can't yeah. do it. Yeah, so those things. When we had friends around to play for Andrew, yeah. I thought about how to do that because Andrew didn't 
immediately interact easily with other children. So I thought, okay, they all love eating cake and icing. So we're going to make a cake together. So I'd be in the middle, Andrew would be one side and his mate would be the other side and we they'd take turns in mixing and then we'd you know, put in the oven and then I'd sit down near, near them when they were playing Lego or whatever they were doing. Yeah. And then time to ice the cake. So there's two piles of icing and they both slapping it on together. So I tried to, I might have been a bit too much of a hoverer, but um, I tried to make the play experience pleasant for everybody, yeah. including Andrew's mate. You know, I wanted it to be a good experience for him, yeah. for both of them. Yeah. I suppose that's interfering mother, but <laughs> <laughs> in a good way, with good, with good intentions. Yeah, yeah. so I wanted to, yeah. But once Andrew went to TAFE, that all changed. You might say he finally found his crowd. So Andrew went to TAFE had a great time there, loved the community, loved the teachers there, the teachers he still is in touch with. He started at Endeavour probably one day a week, so we were transitioning him to other things. And he eventually joined Endeavour as a, an employee, and um, he's been there now for nearly 20 years. And he has friends, he has good mates, has people who like him because he's Andrew, like yeah. him because, you know, yeah. he's a good mate, yeah. and he'll invite him out here and there, and he has, you know, he's got an iPad and he's got an iPhone, and he has text people and communicates with all his mates, and yeah. But like a lot of carers of kids with special needs, the National Disability Insurance Scheme, the NDIS, has made the difference between Andrew potentially living his entire life in his parents' care, or finally achieving the fiercely independent life that his parents always dreamt for him from the day he was first diagnosed with Down syndrome. Even if things started off a little bit shaky. We got a magnificent package, you know, absolutely amazing package of support but we had nowhere to spend it <laughs> and because in Warwick wasn't ready for it. We didn't have support. We didn't have support providers. We didn't have physios. We did we, not enough physios, OTs, right. speeches. Yeah. So that was... Frustrated. Was, yeah, it was weird, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. But eventually, the real value of the NDIS, the funds to pay for a support worker for Andrew, ended up changing his life and the life of his parents forever. I love yeah. the idea of people with disabilities being able to live an ordinary life. Nothing flash, nothing special, but they can go down the shop. If they'd like to go to the movies on the weekend, they've got someone who perhaps go with them. Yeah. Andrew's just come back from four days holiday in Stanthorpe with his support worker, without us. But now you're in this incredible situation, you know, despite the fact that you were worried, how is he going to lead a regular life? How is he ever going to have a place of his own and all that? Thanks to the NDIS and thanks to good friendships, he has that now. Andrew is sharing a home with his best mate. They'd been planning to share a house for about the last 15 years, I think. He works four days a week, as does his mate. They have a support person who comes to their house at six o'clock in the morning, helps them get breakfast, make sure there's lunch um, for them to take to work. And then similarly in the afternoon, one of their lovely support workers picks them up at four o'clock and takes them home. And again, they do homey things. They might go shopping on one day of the week, go down to local sports on one day a week. Yeah. And the support workers are wonderful. They make sure the place is clean, you know, the bathroom's cleaned every morning and things like that. They're such good mates. I mean, we had our lovely old dog. We lost we lost her last week and we were having her put down. And so Andrew and his mate rang us 5.30 that morning, both of them together. They're both equally upset. It sounds a simple thing, but Andrew's friend said, look, I was a bit worried about Andrew last night. This is the night before our old dog was put down. He said, I gave him my teddy to sleep with. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> and according, according to his friend's relatives, this is a very special thing to be <laughs> given. <laughs>